Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the round scrubby. And this is the round scrubby here. As you can see, it comes in two sizes. And as an option, you don't have to have it in your scrubby, but if you're one who likes to hang up your scrubbies to dry, as an option, I have included just a simple hanger um, that is attached at the end of the pattern when you're working your edging. So these are the round scrubbies. They are made with the Red Heart Scrubby yarn, which is this yarn right here. You can see it has some funny texture. It comes in either a cotton or a 100% polyester uh, option. And so that's it right there. Now scrubbies are fun to make. They're great for dishes. They're great for the bath. Um, this scrubby requires about between 30 and 45 yards of this yarn. Now if you would prefer to not work with a scrubby yarn, it is difficult to work with at times. You may also make this scrubby using a worsted weight cotton. So today for this project, you're going to need between 30 and 50 yards of the Red Heart Scrubby or worsted weight cotton. You will also need a six millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. Now a free copy of the written pattern for the round scrubby can be found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And uh, while you're there or while you're here, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, through my blog, you'll also find links and buttons where you can find my Facebook community as well as Instagram and Twitter. So thank you so much for joining me today. Now that we have all of our materials together, let's get started. Okay, so for this scrubby today, I'll just show you here on this one, you will see that this scrubby is double thick. So it has two sides for it, which makes it kind of extra tough. So for the pattern, for each, uh, for the main circular part of the body, you're going to begin by making two of these. Okay, so you're going to be making two sides, which are then crocheted together at the very end. Now to begin, you're going to take your scrubby yarn and you're going to make a magic ring, however you like to make your magic ring. To make my ring, I cross it over and then I act as though I'm almost going to be making a slip knot and I reach through and I just grab the yarn that is attached to my ball of yarn. So I just grab it loosely and kind of pull it through a little bit and then I pull this little tail to make my ring a little bit smaller holding on to the yarn that's attached to my ball and then I have a bit of a loop here sticking out. So there are lots of great tutorials out there on how to make a magic ring. Uh, that's just the way that I like to do it. So then I'm going to attach my hook and I'm going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. The chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet stitch. Next, I'm going to work 11 double crochet stitches into the center of my ring. To make your double crochet, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook through the center of your ring, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops on your hook. You're going to do that for a total of 11 times. At any time, you may want to tighten your ring just a little bit to make it a little bit smaller and less awkward to work in. So work 11 double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. Because your chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet stitch, at the end of this round, you will have a total of 12 double crochet stitches. Once you have a total of 12 double crochet stitches worked into the center of your ring, you're just going to take that little tail, you're going to pull your ring closed fairly gently, and you might have to wiggle it through a little bit, kind of work with it, uh, because the yarn does like to stick. It is pretty tough, this yarn, so you can pull it fairly tight, but you just want to pull it until you have a nice, tight center. You're then going to join with a slip stitch 
in the top of that chain three. So pull your threads there apart a little bit. You can see my chain three here, and this is the top of my chain three. Just join with a slip stitch in the top. That is the end of round one. For round two, we are going to begin by chaining two stitches. One, two. The chain two at the beginning of your round does not count as a stitch. Next, you are going to work two front post double crochet stitches around the same stitch as joining. So that same stitch is your chain three that you joined in the top of. To work a front post double crochet stitch, and it may help at this point to kind of spread your stitch apart a little bit so you can see it as I've done here. To work your front post double crochet stitch, you're going to yarn over and you're going to insert your hook from the front across the back of the post of that chain three and your hook will come out through the front on the other side. You're then going to yarn over, pull your yarn through back behind that post Yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. That's your front post double crochet. You're going to work two of those around that first stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook again around the post, working from right, across the back, to the left. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two more loops. Next, you will double crochet in the top of the next stitch. So find your next stitch. You'll see your loop there up at the top. And you'll just work, oh, sorry, one double crochet stitch in the next. You are now going to repeat that all the way around. So two front post double crochet stitches around the next stitch. One double crochet stitch in the top of the next. Repeat that all the way around. I'll show you the front post double crochet once again. So yarn over, find your next stitch, insert your hook around the post from right to left, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two more. You're going to do that one more time around the same post. Insert your hook right to left, Yarn over and pull through and complete your double crochet stitch. Then you will double crochet in the top of the next stitch. So continue to repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 18 stitches and then you will join in the top of that first front post double crochet stitch. For round three, what you're going to do is you're going to begin by chaining two. Remember that this does not count as a stitch. And you are now going to work two front post double crochet stitches around each of the first two front post double crochet stitches. So you have your first two front post double crochet stitches. They are a little bit raised up from the rest of uh, your pattern so that is how you can easily recognize them. You're going to work two front post double crochet stitches around each of them. So yarn over, insert your hook around that first front post double crochet right to left. Yarn over, pull through and complete your stitch. And one more around the same stitch. There's two. Now moving on to your next front post double crochet stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook around the post of that next stitch. Complete it. And then one more. So you'll have a total of four front post double crochet stitches. Next, you will double crochet in the top of the next stitch. And now you're going to repeat two front post double crochet stitches around each of the next two front post double crochet stitches and then double crochet in the next stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around 
back to the beginning where you will join with a slip stitch in the top of your first front post double crochet stitch. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 30 stitches. Now, at the end of round three, if you are working on the smaller size scrubby, which is about three and a half inches across, if you're working on that scrubby, what you're going to do is you're going to fasten off and you're going to trim your end because uh, you are uh, finished. And then you're going to go back and you're going to repeat rounds one to three one more time for the other side. If you are continue on, continuing on to make the large scrubby, which is about four and a half inches across, you're going to work one more round. That's what I'm going to do here for you uh, right now. So again, if you've been wanting to make this small scrubby at this point, you're going to fasten off your work and uh, go on ahead and make your second side. But if you're making your large scrubby, you're going to continue along at this point with me. You're going to begin round four by chaining two, one, two, and you're going to work uh, two front post double crochet stitches around each of the first four front post double crochet stitches. So you can see I have my one, two, three, four front post double crochet stitches there. Uh, feel free to spread them out if it helps to see them a little bit better. I'm going to work two front post double crochet stitches around each one. So you'll have a total of eight front post double crochet stitches. There's two. Move on to my next post. There's three. Next post. It's five and six. And the next front post double crochet is my seventh and eighth. You will then double crochet in the top of the next stitch. You're now going to repeat that all the way around. Two front post double crochet stitches in each of the next four, followed by one double crochet stitch in the next stitch. So you're going to complete that and repeat, uh, do that repeat all the way around your scrubby. When you come back to the beginning, you're going to join in the top with a slip stitch and then you're going to set that piece aside and repeat rounds one to four for the second side. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 54 stitches. Okay, so now you will have worked, this is my large scrubby here, so you will have worked two sides completing rounds one two, four for your scrubby, and these are my right sides facing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join these two sides together to make one scrubby. So we're going to take our wrong sides, this is the wrong side, we're going to put them together just like this. We're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in any, uh, in any, the top of any stitch. So find the top of one. You're going to be working through both thicknesses, okay? So just match the stitches up anywhere at all. Just, oops, sorry, I kind of went out of camera there. I'll show you that again. So find the top of the stitch there and the top of the stitch on the other side. Your wrong sides are facing in. You're going to take your yarn and you're going to join with a slip stitch, working through both thicknesses. For this entire round, you will always be working through both sides. Okay, once you have joined and you have worked a little chain there, you're going to insert your hook again through that same stitch and you're going to work one single crochet stitch. You are now going to work one single crochet stitch in each stitch through both thicknesses all the way around your scrubby. 
So if you are working your large scrubby, it will be a total of 54 stitches. If you are working the small scrubby, it will be a total of 30 stitches. You're just single crocheting in the top of each stitch through both thicknesses all the way around. Okay, so I am now working my final single crochet stitch around the edge. Once you come to um, your first stitch, you have a couple of options. You can either just join with a slip stitch in the top of that single crochet stitch, join and finish off your work, or if you'd like to hang up your scrubbies um, to let them dry, then we'll make a simple hanger. You can uh, do that by chaining five. There's one, two, three, four, five. Once you've chained five, you're simply then going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch. After you have joined with a slip stitch, you're going to fasten off your work and you're going to weave in your ends. And there you have it. You have worked your round scrubby. Now these scrubbies are great. I wash and dry mine um, in the washing machine and the dryer. Uh, no problem. So they are definitely reusable. You can use them time and time again and they're pretty tough um, and uh, safe to use on uh, the no scratch pans. So there you are. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on how to make the round scrubby. Once again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I like to update it weekly with free crochet patterns as well as uh, stitch tutorials. The free written instructions for this pattern will be found in the video notes of this video. Thank you so much. Happy crocheting. Bye.